Okay, let's try this. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah, this is a new problem. And we want to attack this problem again using the same type of uh, systematic approach and notation as the previous problems. No, that's uh, that's basically right. So um, one thing, I, we, let's get in the habit of making predictions. What could, what, 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 what could we have predicted about the answer at the start here? That it has to be higher below, than one. Yeah, below, seven. below 7, but higher than 1, because it's not a strong acid. OK, fair enough. So the main thing I was going for is that it's going to be less than 7. Uh, in this case, I guess we can also see that it is going to be greater than 1. That's right, because if this was a strong acid, it would come out to be 1. That takes a little bit more um, insight, but that, that's correct. All right, now um, I want to put molarity in here, but the molarity is easy to calculate because we've got one mole divided by one liter, so that's one molar. But let's start getting in the habit, I think you were doing this, of putting in the units in the table so we don't forget about that. So I would put in one molar here. We're going to start with zero concentrations of this. Now, the thing that maybe you forgot to ask yourself is, is this reaction going to completion or to equilibrium? It's going to uh, equilibrium. equilibrium. How do we know? Because it's not a strong acid, so it doesn't really dissociate. Yeah, it's a weak acid. Now, how do we know this is a weak acid? Well, the biggest clue is that they told us the equilibrium constant, right? They wouldn't have given us an equilibrium constant if it was strong, because strong acids don't really have equilibrium constants. By the way, remember a second ago we were doing a problem about sodium hydroxide, and we weren't sure if it was strong or weak? One way you could tell is that I didn't give you the equilibrium constant. Since I didn't give you the equilibrium constant, that must mean that it is strong. Otherwise, I'd have to give you the equilibrium constant to, to solve the problem. So if you see an equilibrium constant given, you know we're treating that like a weak acid or base. All right, what that means is we can't say that we're going to use up all one molar of this, because that would be what would happen if the reaction goes to completion. Instead, we don't know how much we're going to use up. This is like doing the case of the water autoionization, where at first we didn't know how much of the water was going to react. How much of this are we going to be producing? Uh, we're going to be producing x of this and x of this. So we'll end up with 1 minus x, x and x. Now in equilibrium, q is equal to k. Here the equilibrium constant is CH3COO minus times OH minus 
over. Now there's both a numerator and a denominator to the equilibrium constant, because uh, there's aqueous species on both sides. Now there's a special name for the equilibrium constant for this reaction. What's the name for the equilibrium constant for this type of reaction? Well, that's the Ka. Just like the Kw is just a special name for the equilibrium constant for water auto-ionization, Ka is just a special name for the equilibrium constant for acid dissociation or acid ionization. So here I want to put in the Ka. So the acetate concentration here is x. The hydroxide concentration is x. Um, the acetic acid is 1 minus x. And we're going to plug in 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. Then you remember to trick from class. If you try to solve this, you'll get a quadratic equation, which you can't solve without the quadratic formula, which maybe in your course you're not expected to do on the tests. Um, so in that case, if you're not expected to use the quadratic formula on the test, we have to make an approximation. And the general type of approximation here, we, you'll see many of the same type. Because this is weak, we can expect x to be small. Uh, and then 1 minus x should be about the same thing as just 1. For example, if x was 0 0.0001, 1 minus 0 0.0001 is just about the same thing as 1. So that's an approximation that we're generally going to make on a lot of these types of problems. All right, so then we have that x is the square root of 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. Wait, how come it goes into OH minus if shouldn't it be H3O plus? Did I make a mistake? Thank you. I totally screwed up, so that's the reason. Because I made a mistake. So this should have been H3O plus. I was just going too fast. Yeah, that's right. This is an acid, so it's creating hydronium, not hydroxide. Now to find the pH, that's the negative log of the hydronium concentration. But what is the hydronium concentration here? Well, X stands for the hydronium concentration, now that we fixed the way I messed up in the, in the uh, chemical equation here. So that would be the negative log of 0 0.0042. What answer did you get for that? 2.37. Yeah, <clears throat> which matches our prediction. OK, good. All right, um, so the key thing that might have given you trouble here was not realizing this is an equilibrium reaction, not one that goes to completion. Um, so on the test, you're going to keep shuttling back and forth between strong acids and weak acids. So it's easy to try to do a, a weak acid problem as if it was a strong acid, or vice versa. So you have to be clear in your mind about the difference between those. If it's a weak acid, we put X's into the table, because we don't know up front how much it's going to dissociate. If it's a strong acid or base, it just goes to completion. OK. So which case in the handout have we done? We got it. All right, so again, you should make a note that this is where the demonstration of how to do a weak acid is in your notes.